Sorry, yeah. yeah, we're laughing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fascinating. <clears throat> Welcome. This is take two. <laughs> I guess the first time around, I was going to get some jitters out and whatever. So, my name is Andy Sleuth22. I am a longtime gamer, first time streamer. So, or we've learned a little bit, learned a bit today about uh, how to navigate streaming. Um, so, I plan to play through several games um, from her interactive, specifically Nancy Drew. There are several. Um, a lot of which that I hadn't played because they're more new, newer games. So yeah, I'm a bad Nancy Drew fan, but I want to start from the beginning. So the first game came out in 1998. So that's been a bit. So bear with me. The game isn't going to be as fast paced as some of the later games because it's the first game they ever released. But it is a classic and it most certainly built a lot of the things that we see later in the games. They do like to give some homage to um, past games, so the context would help. So um, feel free to add comments as we move through the game. Tell me what you think we should do next. Talk about whatever you want. I will uh, try to keep up with the comments and, and such throughout the game. I like to get to know everyone as they come and join. Um, so we're starting today with Secrets Can Kill, and uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get right to it. Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. This is my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. And be sure to check out my scrapbook. I put memorabilia from all my past cases in there. A lot of them were pretty dangerous and at times really scary. But don't say anything about that to my dad, okay? He worries about me enough as it is. And whatever you do, read what's in the file called Case File. That'll tell you all about the mystery I'm about to try to solve. If you think you're ready to dive into that mystery, just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your way. Oh, Lord. I meant to tell everyone you need to grab your handy dandy notebooks and your pens to take your notes. Because as a good detective, and we only play senior level here in this house, uh, you take good notes. So make sure you're prepared. Um, so I'm not gonna go through the how to be a detective book. <laughs> it's about how to navigate this, the game itself, which I'm fairly certain I know how to do. And the scrapbook is gonna be about games that we'll get to. So I don't wanna ruin anything if you've never played before. So let's read the case file. A student named Jake Rogers was killed at the local high school last week. An undercover detective by the name of Beach asked Aunt Eloise if I could go undercover to investigate the murder. I'm posing as a new student to see what other kids may know about Jake and his untimely death. Or end. You know what I mean. Okay. I don't know why this mug is shiny, but it is. Oh! I can turn the lamp on. Alright, let's go. Let's grab that ticket, shall we? Like I said, we only play senior level in this house. 
Dear Dad, who would have dreamed taking a vacation to visit Aunt Eloise in Florida would result in another case? Seems a student named Jake Rogers was murdered at the high school last week. And an undercover police detective wants me to pose as a student to search for any leads at the school. So, it's undercover I go. I'm calling this case Secrets Can Kill. Love, Nancy. Nancy, I had to close the school library early today, but if you need to do any research for your case, the key to the library is in the safe. Remember not to enter in a wrong combination. Be careful, Aunt Eloise. All right, we gotta figure out how the combination. Unless for some reason she has it in here. No, she does not. Of course not. Um, okay. Whenever I see things like symbols or things like Greek letters like this, I always want to try and capture that. So, Sigma Phi Kappa Delta. Cordially invite you to a reunion, blah blah blah, at the Emerald Press Ballroom here in Florida. Okay, so that might come up. Haunted Ghost Bridge. Strange things have happened on this bridge. Some people have reported hearing screams and cries from below the span. Others had reportedly ghostly figures looming at the end, and even others have felt cold, tingling sensation throughout their body when crossing. No one is certain about the origin of these sightings. The first documented case of spectral phenomenon occurred around the turn of the last century when a troop of Girl Scouts camped out there. Woo woo, Girl Scouts! Uh, all returned with their hair turned white. None of the frightened campers was sp spoke a word until a year later, a year. At first, the girls just babbled incoherently or screamed or laughed. A psychiatrist specializing in traumatic experiences was asked to examine the girls, but the girls would only say one phrase. Follow the X to the spot below. And then there's these things at the bottom. So, uh, again, as a good senior detective, I'm going to write that down because that must mean something. Why would the bottom of a page have random letters? You know? So. Z-V-P-E-B. -E I don't know what exp.1.11. We shall see. Again, just write it down. Why not? It's not going to hurt me. really loud couch print. <laughs> Reminders. Talk to Jake about library books out of order. Call Nancy to get flight numbers. Call Jackie about Spanish schools. Who's Jake? No, Jake's the one who died. I should remember that. I'm a detective. Jake's the one who died. trip with Maxine, Maggie learned an old hiker's trick. Are Lena and Maggie coming to tea, inquired Carl. No, they've gone to see the bandit's treasure at the Lando Lakes Theater, replied Anja. Brady Armstrong is playing the lead. Oh, I once visited Brady's restaurant in Napa, California, squealed Renante. It's called Mama Loney's. It was magnificent. I ate there, said Carl, and got sick on a jellyfish sandwich. Bob whinnied. What is this? 
What is this? Um, oh, offered Renate. You should have tried the dog's eye. It was Robin Hood. A dog, a barking dog would do well to hold its tongue in that neighborhood, joked Carl. Everyone laughed. I feel like I need something special to help you understand this. Um, I rare... I rarely dine out, complained Anja, only once in a blue moon. Stifling a yawn, Renate put down her glam-glam magazine. When are we going to return to the big island? Mike stood up and glared at Renate. Pish, pish. <laughs> you know I'll never go back there. Oh, don't be such a baby, scalded Renate. Mike is afraid to go back because he's, he got bit by a spider there, she explained to the other guests. He went to the ER and the bill was huge because his copay was so much. Uh, my dad always wants to preach and complain about high insurance costs, muttered Lucas. You know, I always wanted to be an astronaut, Carl interrupted. Did you hear that Daryl is going to the Air Force Academy? Is he? asked Renate, offering a plate of cutlets to her guests. Okay, you guys, this was, like, painful. I don't even know what this is for, or if it's just fluff. That was painful. Oh, look, a VCR! something to make this work. Okay. So we gotta find a VHS tape. Always check the bookshelves. Hey, look at key. Tea lounge. Tea dab. Um. Oh. Okay, never mind. It wasn't locked. These look like the Nancy Drew books that I have. Okay, what what is with the sparkling? What does that mean? Should I try... Should I try this key? Why would this open like that? tell you you write down everything so the Greek letters that we saw earlier I'm hoping it's a four letter thing I don't really know if it is or not so we said Sigma Phi Kappa Delta so Sigma Phi Kappa Delta there it is kiddos ideas Here's our first puzzle. All right, so don't judge me. It might take me a moment. No comments from the peanut gallery. Mm. 
You guys are close, but not close at the same time. <laughs> I'm gonna have to turn that music down again. I can't do it. hear my sister yelling now. No, don't do that. No, not that way. Must be the blank corner. That's why it's throwing me off. Oh, okay. bad detective. Login. Eloise drew capital letters. 
And then the password is O Wise Elmer, also in all caps. is only two rooms. <laughs> uh, okay. I guess we're going somewhere. <gasps> Zala. Someone answer it! Nancy Drew, oh, okay. Detective Beach here. <laughs> How are you? Good, and yourself? Frustrated, Nancy. I need some leads and you're my man. Uh, well, woman, teen, student, whatever. I'll be at Maxine's diner. Come see me when you found out anything. All contact should be through me. Can do. So what's our cover? Our what? Um, our cover. Who should I say you are if anyone sees us and asks? Oh, right. Uh, I'll be your uncle. Uncle Steve. I gotta go now. If you need anything else, come see me at Maxine's. I'm wearing glasses and a green striped shirt. You sound like a nerd. Welcome to Maxine's. I'm Daryl Gray. I don't think I've seen you here before. My name's Nancy Drew. I just moved down here. My then you'll be attending Paseo Del Mar High. I'm your student council president. If there's anything you need, just let me know. Thanks. I might just take you up on that offer. So... No, I won't What can I do for you? <laughs> Tell me about Paseo Del Mar High. It's a great school. Good teachers, nice students, lots of after-school activities. It's just too bad what happened. What happened? One of the students was murdered in the school last week. No. Who was murdered? A senior named Jake Rogers. He worked here, but I didn't really know him. He kept mainly to himself. Who did it? No one knows, and the police are keeping pretty clammed up about it. But my resources say they're calling in some special detective. Maybe even the FBI. <laughs> the FBI? Wow, you must have some special contacts. <laughs> Just special enough to see beautiful women like yourself. Cringe. Did this Jake guy have any enemies? Sure, doesn't everyone? I should get back to work. Nice meeting you, Nancy. A little shifty eye there, buddy. Hmm. I don't know about Daryl. Bye. Bye, Nancy. And he hasn't even bust the table? What a lazy bum. He's just sitting behind the counter. Not even cleaning. But, the, like, look at all these dirty tables. Get to work. Uncle Steve! Nancy! Why, I haven't seen you since, uh, uh for a long time. <laughs> How's he your... does look like a nerd. Aunt. Aunt Eloise. Oh, she's fine. And Dad says hello. You're staying with your aunt, right? Yes. So, uh, what do you got for me? Well, I was hoping you could debrief me on the investigation. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'm just a bit, well... My undercover assignments are usually not so... Uh, suburban. I understand. The victim was a senior named Jake Rogers. As usual, none of the family, teachers, or students know about any enemies he may have had. Nothing came up from searching his home, computer, cell phone, or locker. His bank records tell a different story. He had a fairly large savings account and a lot of cash deposits. We suspect he was involved in something shady. Drugs, gambling, or blackmail. That's where you fit in. <laughs> Talk to the students and see what you can find out. We think he might have kept information about his activities in a notebook or journal. So keep a lookout for anything like that. Anything else? 
Bye bye. See you later. It's kind of sad that an adult, <laughs> like a, an actual cop, is needing a random citizen's help. I feel like there's something I should be looking at. Oh, menu. Uh, wow. Okay, so there's some weird letters in this. Prices aren't bad. Okay, so you got some green letters and some red letters. So the green ones. O U R N A. Oh gosh, I'm missing some. There's a J up there. I feel like I'm missing a letter. And there's also pink ones. Okay. J. R. I'm missing like, I would imagine an L because it should spell maybe journal. Okay. And then the red ones. We got an H, an I, an S, okay, and then the blue letters, and then the purple letters. X E colon R E or R three, excuse me, not E. So his journal is my cash cow is the phrase that that comes out to be. But that this part down here by desserts. Don't know what that means. Woot. <laughs> I don't have enough money. Nancy's broke. Okay. Barnacle Blast. Oh gosh, guys. Barnacle Blast is from a different game, so we're not coming to that. We're not gonna play that right now. <laughs> That's awesome. This looks like it's the similar thing. There's much else in here. Make sure I didn't miss anything else. What can I do for you? Fine, I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. See ya. I guess we'll go check out the high school. Manatees are the mascot. Learning is the only thing the mind ever, the mind never exhausts, never fears, and never regrets. Da Vinci. So. 
a lot of stuff in the floor. Yuck! The nimble. <laughs> the Roaring Girl, a Jacobean comedy. Performances are Friday through Sunday at 8 p.m. Dr. Deception, a poetic drama written by the senior essay winner of Paso High School. Students' files under lock and key will show the lies of the doctor to be. HFL1. Tickets go on sale Monday. HFL1. What is that? So we had that similar kind of letter colon letter number on the menu. So maybe that's going to be something we need to look at later. All right. So let's go with the right maintenance room. Oh my. We're going to need to know to look out for something like this. Another bulletin board. Just say no. Oh my. Special announcement is senior essay contest. Okay, so the ones with the lines under them. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna write these down. Yes, buddy, I know. So P U T E. one there okay so e l e m e n t s i n o r d e r t o P-E-N P-U-Z-Z-E And then it has this combination of letters again. Z-N-D-1 Put elements in order to open PUDs and it leaves me without the L. So there's a puzzle that somewhere that we'll have to use the elements. So that that is the elements. I wondered if it was. Oof. Okay. Check out this bulletin board. So many bulletin boards. Friends and family are invited to come to the fifth annual picnic of Paso Del Mar Junior High School Marching Band. Meet in the parking lot at 9 in the morning. Picnic will take place December 8th at Walden Reservoir. Woodwinds and percussion should wear full dress whites except for hats. Brass recital is set for later. Well, it sounds like the percussion and woodwinds got the short end of that stick. <laughs> Cl 
lips. Oh, that's from one of the Nancy Drew books. That's awesome. Okay. I guess. The teacher's lounge is off limits. Oh. But I have a key. Until you can show me some teaching credentials, you're not allowed in. Oh, busted. Student of the month. This guy looks weird. Why are they not in order? I'm gonna write that down. Um, I would call in order starting with January. Just putting it out there. Now you could argue, I guess, the school year starts, but still. Again with the shiny. So weird. I'm gonna have to look that up. I, don't, I really don't even know what that is. Hi, I'm Connie. You're not from around here, are you? Right. Usually, Paseo del Mar High is really quiet and boring. Lately, it's been totally out of control. Out of control? One of the students was killed last week. What happened? I think he was pushed down a flight of stairs or something. What makes you think he was pushed and didn't just fall? I heard his face was all messed up, like he was in a fight. He was always getting into fights. What kind of guy was Jake? Jake Rogers was a total creep. Nobody liked him. Whoa. I gotta go now. Later. Okay, hall monitor. Dweeb. Okay, so Connie seems a little weird. Hey, Nancy, need something? Have you seen any of those weird messages on the bulletin boards? <sighs> yes, and if I catch the guy who's doing it, he's going to be in big trouble. I bet it's the same person who keeps on setting off the soda machine alarm. How well do you know Daryl Gray? I wish I knew him better. He's the only guy I'd ever consider dating. He's student council president, holds a cool job at a diner called Maxine's, and drives a Seaback X80. <laughs> drives a sports car and works at a diner? That doesn't compute. Yeah, I don't get it either. Daryl's family was rich and used to throw major parties all the time, but not anymore. I'll let you go. Adios. So the hall monitor just sits around school when no one's here? Connie, get a life! Again with the shinies. Okay, <laughs> it's weird. I don't have enough money. later. They are awfully proud of these manatees. Okay. A crane contestant 
in a masked disguise want, won't what? Won the prize money despite all the lies. That was really hard to read. Hmm. Find another bulletin board. Honest to goodness, why are there so many? School news. Seniors, all entries in art exhibit must be picked up at the library on Thursday. See Eloise True for information. Oh, and then these weird words. Except, what is this one looks different. I'm gonna write down this phrase that's scrambled. So, this is a scrambled message of some sort that we'll have to figure out. So we got CR1. Hi, my name's Nancy Drew. What's your name? Hal Tanaka. Actually, my first name is much longer than that. But I want to fit in here in America, so I chose Hal as my nickname. I'm a Japanese exchange student. Why do you think it's easier to have an American name? I want to be part of the culture and succeed in this country. Do you plan on staying in America after you finish high school? My family is counting on me to succeed here. I must make them proud of me. Wow. Proud of you? In Japan, it's very important that you do something your family can take pride in. I have made some mistakes, but I try to be a decent person. What kind of mistakes? I feel uncomfortable speaking about this now. Please excuse me. No, oh, no. You're not getting off the hook. Do you know Connie Watson? Yes, we've been in a few classes together. I think she was dating Jake Rogers. What? What can you tell me about Daryl Gray? He's very popular and a good politician too. Just like his father. Like his father? I hear he was a great politician, but not a very good businessman. I think his company went bankrupt a few years ago. Hmm. See you later. See you later, Nancy. Hmm. So this must be the art exhibit that poster was about. <laughs> All the Nancy Drew stuff, that's pretty cool. Oh, goodness. 
Another thing to write down. Okay, so the first two repeat. This is almost like what you would look up library books with. Which I feel so old saying because I doubt the younger generations know how to do that. And then there's that YD3. Hmm. Library hours. She said it was locked. Great, great, orange cool will play the alarm in the school. Okay. That's the soda machine. I bet that will get um, Connie away long enough for me to get into the student or the teacher lounge. Interesting. Do I need a key for that? Maybe this? Oh, it worked. Gemstones and how to identify them. Uh, why would she pick this book up? Gemstones include any number of crystalline rocks, which, when cut and polished, can be used as jewelry. Their con commercial value usually depends on how rare they are, although beauty is certainly a factor as well. Because gemstones are are more often than not found by accident, it behooves miners, prospectors, and even farmers to be able to re recognize them. For the earth holds many natural treasures, but only for those who know what to look for. Quartz is one of the most abundant minerals on earth. Crystalline quartz is a composite of six-sided prisms which have grown together in the process called twining. Sometimes the crystals grow at the right angles to each other, and more frequently two crystals grow from a common prism face or several crystals can grow into each other so that the corner of one penetrates the face of another. Okay. Uh, amethyst is crystalline quartz that is lilac to deep and to deep purple in color. The deeper the color, the more valuable it is. Citrine is a form of quartz that is rich golden color. It's closely related to amethyst. In fact, the amethyst is heated to 550 degrees centigrade. It comes citrine. For the heat, el for the heat eliminates the impurity that causes the purple coloration. Oh. Tiger's eye is a fibrous type of crystalline quartz in which thin yellowish and reddish brown bands are apparent when light refracts off its polished surface. Maybe I should be writing this down. Uh, I'll come back to it. Diamond is a pure carbon in carbon and is forced deep in the mantle of the earth where extreme temperatures more than 1,000 degrees centigrade and extreme pressure 50,000 times greater than the earth's surface makes its crystal extremely compact 
and strongly bonded, hence diamond's well-known hardness. Due to the hardness, low-quality diamonds are, have many industrial uses, such as grinding wheels and drill bits. Magma brings diamond crystals to the Earth's surface along with other rocks from the mantle. These kimberlite pipes often contain olivine, peridot, garnet, and zircon, as well as diamond. This is really hard to read. Um, when gem hunters spot any of the indicators minerals pictured below, they would do well to search the surrounding areas for diamond crystals. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to write those down then. Because <laughs> I'm sure there's something about the diamonds going to come up. Zircon, olivine, and garnet are near diamonds. Tourmaline comes in many colors that is probably has at one time or another been confused with all of the other stones in this book. However, tourmaline crystals are deeply, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, tourmaline uh, crystals are deeply and distinctively striated, grooved, prismatic, and triangular in cross section. The most common color is black and some taurine co uh, crystals are multicolored such as watermelon taurine, maline, uh, which is pink on the inside and green on the outside. I don't think I've ever seen that. Good night, y'all. So many stones. Beryl is a very diverse mineral with several gemstone varieties. Common beryl is op opaque, milky green, while the rare, that's really hard to read, rare gem varieties are transparent. All varieties form long hexagonal prismatic crystals, which are similar to tourmaline crystals, but lack the tourmaline's characteristic striation. Aquamarine is the blue-green to deep blue variety of beryl. Okay. While most gemstones form relatively small crystals, aquamarine has been known to form crystallines weighing more than 100 pounds although such specimen are rare. Emerald is a deep green variety of beryl which gets its color from trace amounts of chromium. Uh, emerald gemstones tend to contain extraneous matter. Indeed, the source of the stone can sometimes be pinpointed by examining its impurities or inclusions. Hmm. Garnet is relatively common gem gemstone because gemstone bleh, because garnet is often appears in their host rocks as almost perfectly faceted crystals. They have attracted human attention for centuries. Unlike other gemstones, garnet for forms relatively spherical crystals that are generally reddish in color and look somewhat like pomegranate seeds. Priope? Priope? I don't know. Garnet's crystals are deep red. They form in the Earth's mantle and are brought to the Earth's surface in such the same way in such the same way as diamond crystals. Therefore, finding pyrope increases the likelihood but doesn't guarantee if the diamond can be found in the vicinity. Peridot is the well-known form of olivine it's bright apple green crystal and thick and vertically striated with wedge-shaped terminations and an oily luster. Most peridot is found amid basilistic rocks which have been brought to their surface by lava. Corundum, seriously I'm really sucking at reading these, or aluminum oxide is second in hardness only to diamonds as a component of black magnetic rock known as emery has been mined and used really hard to read that, for thousands of years as an abrasive. Its crystals are commonly six-sided, barrel-shaped with tapering ends, and are when pure colorless. This looks like the last page. 
Rubies are one of the two gemstone varieties of cordrum. Rubies are deep red and formed when uh, chromium substitutes for aluminum and as cordrum crystallizes. Sapphires include all the other color variations of gem cordrum and may be pink, yellow, green, blue, or colorless, depending on which transitional elements such as iron and titanium influence the crystallization process. However, cornflower blue sapphires are far, are far the most sought after. And then finally, zircon. That is gemstone quality rivals diamonds in its beauty and brilliance, though not in hardness. Zircon crystals are typically prismatic with primordial ends and are usually found as single specimens. They may be suspended in rock or because they're dense and durable, Small grain like crystals are often round in much placer in, in beach placer deposits. Natural gemstones are usually reddish brown, but when subjected to heat, turn yellow, colorless, or blue. Alright. Obviously, we're gonna have to remember this book and come back to it, because I'm not writing all that down. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. So something about gemstones we're gonna come up. That's interesting. I wonder why we picked that book. What is a relic? Throughout the ages, the remains and intimate possessions of religious figures have been recovered, preserved, and venerated by their followers. Such items, known as relics, are particularly important in Catholicism. After Constantine facilitated the establishment of Christianity as the predominant religion of the Roman Empire in AD 312, consecrating new churches by securing and sometimes displaying the relics of saints became standard practice. Over the centuries, as cathedrals and basilicas were built and rebuilt across Europe, the relics associated with them often dictated their political as well as spiritual importance. Relics were kept inside a cavity inside the altar, sepulchre, sepulchre, ooh, gonna have to look that up, of a church, or in the in a container, reliquary, reliquary, or more often were simply buried, so w they would become literally and figuratively part of the church's foundation. Often a relic consisted of partial remains, sometimes a single finger or lock of hair. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> sometimes it was an item a saint had habitually worn or touched, clothes, jewelry, even dishware. It was and still is not uncommon for the relic of a single saint to be several different churches on several different continents. Okay. Saint Bernadette's was exhumed after 30 years and seemed immune, immune to decomposition. That's kind of gross. The bodies of some saints seem miraculously immune to decomposition. These incorruptibles can be still be seen in churches throughout Europe, lying in state in glass septicurals. Sure. Their natural appearance belaying the fact that they died centuries early. What follows is a survey of the relics that can be found in modern day Venice. About some of them, which much is known, about most of them little is known. The history of many of them is frustrating mishmash of fact and fancy. Fact and fancy, okay. But none of the relics ended up where they are by accident. Someone, sometime, believed that they were sacred and went to great lengths to preserve them against the unrelenting onslaught of time and human forgetfulness. The relics of St. Mark, not surprisingly the remains of St. Mark, the evangelist, are buried in St. Mark's Basilica. Famous for writing the earliest of the four Gospels of the, te of the New Testament, Mark spread in the Gospel as well, traveling great distances to preach, eventually founding a church in Alexandria, Egypt. When he died, his remains were enshrined at the church he founded. The city of Venice, at the same time, did not exist. Oh. But by 8 
uh, hindered 28. Venice not only existed, it was looking for a way to demonstrate its independence from Rome and Byzantium, and to be recognized as the major commercial and cultural center it, it was well on its way to becoming. Consequently, a group of Venetian me merchants obtained the body of St. Mark, moving, translating, it from Alexandria to the chapel of the... <laughs> I'm going to read this wrong, but it's just the doge. <laughs> the doge. I don't know. The doge is what I think. The secular ruler of Venice. Some accounts say the merchants purchased the remains, but it's far more likely they stole them. Like every in history. The city rationalized its action by recounting a story in which St. Mark, while sailing to a town nearby, was forced to wait out a storm in a, lagoon, in a lagoon which would later give rise to Venice. An angel reportedly appeared to him and said, Be at peace here, as in, don't be afraid of the storm. The Venetians, however, claimed the angel meant rest here, as in, be buried and rest eternally here. In honor of the city, in honor of the city's new patron saint, the Doge <laughs> rebuilt and expanded his chapel, which eventually became the Grand Basilica it is today, and the city of Venice basked in its newfound status as the guardian and protector of one of the greatest figures of history and of Christianity. All right, the relics of Saint Theodore. Uh, two tall columns built in the 12th century flank the Piazza of Piazza San Marco. Atop one of the winged lions, symbol of St. Mark the Evangelist. Atop the other is the man standing on a crocodile, a symbol of Egypt. This is the St. Theodore of Amasia, the original patron saint of Venice. As Christianity spread through Europe, in the Middle East, following the Edict of uh, Constantine, it was common for cities to obtain the relics of a particular saint, then dedicate the city to their protection. In return, that saint would guard the city. For their patron saint, the Byzantine official who founded Venice chose Saint Theodore, a young soldier who was martyred for his Christian beliefs in AD 306 in Amasia, a city what is now in Turkey. By the 9th century, however, Venetian officials considered Theodore to be an Eastern saint, one more closely associated with Byzantine than Rome, and lacking in star power. And so, when St. Mark's relics were translated to Venice in 828, the relics of St. Theodore were quietly removed from the Doge's chapel and forgotten. I'm, I'm seriously don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to imagine it to be, though, an internet dog doge. His body is said to have been translated to the church which bears his name in Constantinople, where his head is in somewhere in Italy. <laughs> but it is unclear whether these are the same relics that were once enshrined in Venice. I don't think I've ever heard of this guy. This is kind of weird. Also, there is never this much reading in the other games, so this is not the usual. Um... The Chalice of St. Gervais. Gervais and his twin brother, Protoss. You have to read that closely. Really closely, because it looks like prostate. Protoss. <laughs> were the sons of two Christian martyrs in Milan. They too were murdered for their face. Face? They too <laughs> were martyred for their faith. Probably when Marcus Aurelius was the Roman Empire, 161 and 180. Little else is known about their lives. It is the, uh, the way in which their relics were discovered that make them truly remarkable. In 386, St. Ambrose needed relics in order to consecrate his new basilica in Milan. Heeding what he had seen in a dream, he started digging in a cemetery outside the city. There found the remains of St. Gervais and St. Protes. The relics were moved to the basilica and buried there. The twins became the patron saints of Milan, but the story wasn't over. In the grave with St. Gervais was a cup he and his brother had presumably shared while growing up. Undoubtedly placed in the grave by a friend or relative, the cup was quite plain, 
most likely made of tin, with the letter P awkwardly scratched into the metal on one side and the letter G on the other side. At least that's what the cup looked like when it was removed from the grave. Legend has it, upon exposure to the sun, the cup was miraculously transformed into a majestic, solid gold, jewel-encrusted chalice. The twins' initials were still on it, only now they were precisely drawn patterns of gleaming precious stones. Well, that's quite a transformation. Okay. There is no record that the chalice of St. Gervais was ever placed on display in the Basilica St. Im Rogio in Milan, which means it was either given away or most likely stolen soon after its discovery. More than a thousand years later, the chalice surfaced in Assisi when it was used to pay off a debt. It eventually fell off into the hands of the priest who realized it, what it was, and in 1708 presented it to the co uh, covenant of St. Gervais in Venice. For 300 years, the nuns there have watched over their beloved relic. While the convent is close to the public, it is possible, though extremely difficult, for people to have a demonstrable interest in the art and history to arrange a private viewing of the chalice. So all of that just to tell us about the chalice. I need something to drink. Alright, so like, I'm assuming maybe we're gonna find this chalice somewhere. We're gonna have to go and look for it. Why else would we get all this history? There's gotta be a reason. Okay. Oh, that was a lot. Oh boy. Monsters. Werewolves. Since ancient times, the cunning savagery of of wolves have both terrified and awed the humans with whom they came into contact. In Europe, where wolves were a constant threat to livestock and allegedly to small children and lone travelers, legend as to their evil viciousness became widespread. Predictably, one of these legends involved humans who could transform themselves into wolves. These creatures were called werewolves, where means man, and the transformation came to be known as Lycanthropy? Descriptions of werewolves and the transformation process itself had varied greatly through the ages. Some lycanthropes, lycanthropies, werewolves, let's just call it what it is. Some werewolves assumed the precise appearance of a wolf. Others turned to something that was half human, half beast. Sometimes the change was permanent, sometimes they could transform at will. Sometimes environmental factors brought the transformation. The symptoms and duration of a werewolf condition depend entirely upon the curse that was initiated that particular case of lycanthropy. In general, victims who were des uh, destined to alter their form permanently usually appeared pale. Fatigue was a frequent complaint, as well as weak vision, dry tongue, and constant thirst. I promise I'm not a werewolf. <laughs> uh, these symptoms usually accompanied or were soon followed by hair growth, especially on the face and hands. Fingernails grew long and the eyes gradually changed shape and color. The victim's personality also changed. He or she became increasingly ill-tempered and aggressive. As the transformation grew more apparent, the victim usually went into hiding, returning to society only to satisfy its newfound appetite for human flesh. For temporary, for temporary victims who could change their appearance at will, or who were involuntarily transformed by the sound of the wolf's nocturnal howl or a full moon, werewolf symptoms occurred not only over time, but quickly, almost instantaneously. They were forced to assume human form again at sunrise, either by shedding their hair, claws, and fangs, or by taking off their skin and hiding it intact. What? What? Such a werewolf would reportedly suffer the same fate as it shed its skin 
if it was found and destroyed, the werewolf would likely be destroyed. Okay. According to legend, those who voluntarily became werewolves obtained the ability to change their form throughout, through sorcery. Involuntary werewolves were people who had been cursed by someone they had wronged or had been bitten by or born to be a werewolf. Since there was no cure, uh, and since most werewolves were brought to be or thought to be immortal, these changes brought these unfortunate beings were compelled to lead dark, desperate lives until they were felled by a fatal wound to the brain or heart. Though that could only be destroyed by a silver bullet is a modern embellishment. Psycholo um, psychology plays a significant role in werewolves. Wanting to imitate, if not actually become, the thing or person that fe one fears the most seems to be a part of human nature. Far from being a universal phenomenon, werewolves are unknown in regions where there are no wolves. Instead, people spread tales of where bears or where tigers or where crocodiles. What? Whichever animal is most feared. I'm sorry, like a where crocodile is hard for me to imagine. What would trigger that? Like a werewolf is a full moon. What would a where crocodile be triggered by? I I don't even I don't even know. The old saying, if you can't beat them, join them, goes a long way in explaining the source and longevity of many monster legends. More important throughout history, there have been instances of people who actually were werewolves, in their own mind at least, convinced that they had been cursed. They presented all the physical symptoms of a werewolf and often behaved violently. Because they fully believed that they became werewolves, they acted like werewolves. As a result, the people around them treated them like a werewolf, which only reinforced their delusion, thus trapping them in a vicious cycle. Fascinating. This psychological disorder was no doubt prevalent in the Middle Ages, when belief in sorcery curses and creatures such as werewolves were commonplace. The power of suggestion cannot be underestimated, especially in places where education is minimal and superstition passes for truth. Instances of lycanthropic disorder are rare in modern times, although it is possible that many cases go underreported due to misdiagnosis or familial, familial embarrassment. For research psychologists such as myself, information gathering is never-ending process. If you believe you know someone who has undergone a lycanthropic metamorphosis. Please contact me. Palaki Vadas. Alright. Werewolves, gems, and relics are what we're up to thus far. Oh, we need that one. I feel like we may have missed something like a book or two. Not that I want to read a thousand more things, but numbers that we wrote down earlier? Maybe? No results. I don't think that's what it is then. look at that stuff. Yeah. Oh, 
gosh, there's another one. N-A-L-3. Um. <laughs> um. So I'm trying to read this like blue letters and then red letters. If a myth then no Okay, so I'll write down the blue letters and the red letters because I'm sure that that's gonna be taking it over my desk. happens to me seer C uh, oh now we're going to the blue C C H <laughs> search U N D E R under my comb com combine C-O-M-B-O-I-N C-A-T A-L O-G exclamation If anything happens to me, search under my comb in catalog. Okay. There's a comb somewhere? What if we went to the catalog search and did under my comb? Um. <laughs> it seems weird, but no. It's a good place to stop for tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> good times. Definitely uh, brought back a lot of memories that. Um, I mean, I haven't played this game in a long time. It's a lot of fun, though. So I really appreciate uh, getting a chance to explore more about what streaming's like. And then, um, I hope to see uh, more people in the future as we start to play more. So get the word out, share, like my page, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys soon. All right. Bye.